Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our panel. Uh, today we'll uh, delve into a topic that has uh, sparked in, uh, great interest in the industry, the generative AI at the age. Uh, the pace of the development in this field is, uh, you know, very rapid, and uh, it's filled with challenges and opportunities that we are uh, all eager to explore. So, uh, we are uh, thrilled to share our insights, and more importantly, to uh, hopefully hear from you. Um, in this area of the rapid uh, technical ad advancement, the converge of the cloud native technologies and edge computing and also the AI presents on uh, precedent possibilities. Uh, through today's discussion, we aim to deepen our uh, understanding of how uh, this technology functions uh, in real world applications and how they will shape our future. Um, so uh, first of all, let me uh, introduce the panelists we have today. Uh, my name is Kevin Wan. Uh, I'm a long-standing contributor to the uh, CNCF ecosystem. Uh, my contribution to Kubernetes uh, starts uh, in 2015, and uh, uh, later on, I uh, initiated the projects like the uh, Cube Edge, Volcano, and the Kamada. Uh, all of them are uh, uh, currently incubation-level projects in the CNCF, and uh, also I'm now on the uh, technical oversight committee uh, to help the broader community to uh, incubate the new uh, technologies. Uh, uh, so another speaker is uh, Tina Zhou. Tina is the uh, director of uh, infrastructure ecosystem at ARM. Uh, she is the uh, recognized leader in open source software, uh, cloud infrastructure, and edge computing. Uh, she chairs the uh, Kubernetes Edge Day events under CNCF and also uh, serve as the board chair of LFH. Tina, would you like to say hi to everyone? Uh, the Don't next is, uh, sorry. Oh, there's uh, some latency, sorry. Uh, the next uh, uh, speaker is the uh, Ying Ding. Uh, Ying is an engineering manager at Google. Uh, lead of the Kubernetes hardening uh, team and uh, brings over uh, 15 years of ex ex expertise uh, in large scale and uh, distributed con uh, computing. Uh, Ying is also a co founder of the CNCF Cube Edge open source project and the TSC chair of Elf Edge Acreno. Ying has made the significant contributions to the Ad ad advancement of these platforms. Ying, would you like to say hi to everyone? Okay, uh, the next speaker is uh, Hong Bing Zhang. Hong Bing is the chief operating officer of Dow Cloud. He is a veteran uh, in open source areas. He founded IBM China Linux team uh, in 2011 and organized the team to makes significant contributions in Linux kernel, OpenStack, Hadoop projects. Now he is focusing on a cloud native domain and leading Dow Cloud's edge computing uh, technology product business team to uh, con uh, con continue open source contributions. Hello everybody, uh, this is Fung Bing from Dow Cloud. So welcome to our session and we'd like to have some discussion about generative AI and edge computing, thank you. All right, um, so let's move on to our discussion. Okay, um, so the first topic we're going to talk is about the trade-off between uh, cloud and edge for uh, generative AI. Uh, what's the best deployment path? Um, as we know, uh, currently there are some of different uh, ways <coughs> people are explore, uh, exploring. Uh, for example, uh, uh, some people would choose uh, to run uh, part of the uh, small model on the edge to collaborate with uh, those on the, in the cloud, uh, you know, to uh, help and uh, improve the prompt so can, we can get a better um, uh, result. Uh, but also there are a lot of other patterns so uh, 
what do you see uh, the best uh, choice, or uh, what have you seen uh, the other patterns? Uh, Ying, would you like to uh, come to the first? Uh, yeah, from my perspective, I don't think there's big difference from current uh, Cloud Edge AI deployment. So it should be the same. Usually we do training in the cloud because they have a lot of it compute the resource and we do inference at the edge side because it's close to the user. However, there is a challenge for this large language model. Usually it's even the inference, the model is too big to deploy on the, some small edge. So in our industry, for example, Microsoft and Google, they are doing the small language model. So, uh, Microsoft Research released a uh, Phi 2 and uh, Google released a uh, Gemini Nano. So there could be a industry trend to have a much more smaller model for edge deployment. Uh, yeah, so there will collaborate between the cloud edge, the deployment it will be similar to current situation. Yeah, back to you, Kevin. Okay, um, Hongbi, would you like to share uh, your sites? Okay, um, I think you know generative AI is very popular, and I think it's a key topic for our Kubrickon conference. At the same time, edge computing provides all kinds of the scenarios and use cases. So it's uh, a lot of practice to how to uh, combine the large language model from cloud together with uh, edge computing. Uh, yeah, because one of my job is to uh, promote some uh, customer engagement. So I can share some insights from, you know, industry point of view or you know, customer perspective. Um, you know, from our engagement, we found a few options to combine uh, Gen AI and edge computing. I, I agree with Yin's comments just now. Uh, there is one road, root option to tailor or customize a large language model to, uh, to run on the edge side, right? For example, the shorten the memory and with a limited uh, you know, resource. But another way we saw from industry is that we can uh, combine the large language model from cloud together with a small language with edge. I mean, the small, the small model is maybe transformer-related or non-transformer-related. For some industries or enterprise customers, they need the, you know, the general, uh, want to leverage general you know, capabilities for a large language model, but they also want some accurate results. For example, for some financial institute, they, want, they have the you know, high, high bar for their output. So they will combine the large language model to handle the gen general use case. But at the same time, they will use the edge computing to, uh, to output some accurate result. We also may engage with one customer to do that. Uh, this customer is like a, a financial customer. They will use leverage the large language model together with the edge computing to handle, to improve their client experience. What they need is to output the accurate result instead of the general result. So they will, uh, they will use, um, for the deployment parts, uh, they will leverage the large language, large language model LLM on the cloud, but they will also deploy a non-transformer model on the edge side, and they will combine their output to generate the better result to their end user. So my opinion is that we can, you know, we have two ways. The one way is to tailor and customize LLM to run on the edge side. The another way is to combine the LLM on cloud and together with the maybe smaller LLM or non-transformer model from the edge side. So that's my opinion and my insight. Okay. Uh, Tina, would you like to uh, share your uh, insight? Uh, hi, Tina. Uh, you call me or Hong Bing? Uh, you. It's your turn. Yeah, can. Is it me? My turn? I cannot hear clearly. Yes, uh, please share your uh, insight about the, uh, our first topic. Yeah. Okay, my turn? 
Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, in the evolving landscape of Gen AI, the synergy between cloud and edge computing plays a pivotal role. While larger models may thrive in the cloud due to their computational and data demands, edge computing opens the door for real-time localized processing with reduced latency. A strategy we are exploring uh, involves leveraging vector databases and domain knowledge to train smaller, more efficient models. These models can generate high quality prompts for larger models, which can be executed in the cloud. This hybrid approach not only optimizes performance, but also ensures scalability and accessibility across various edge environments. Back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No, no. Hello. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, let's move on to the next topic. All right. Uh, uh, challenges of uh, running uh, generative AI on the edge. Uh, so um, we we all know that uh, you know the uh, for example Gen. Uh, Gen AI models, uh, especially LLMs, uh, require a higher performance and a larger memory, and also uh, you know massive data. But uh, these are kind of not always available on edge, right? Uh, but uh, uh, there are more uh, issues uh, definitely uh, uh, to be resolved. So the question is, uh, what do you see the challenges we need to uh, take care about beside the uh, resources. Ian, would you like to uh, be the first? Sure. So in my perspective, there is the challenge will be the security and privacy. So currently the large language module, the training really expensive. So that's precious IP. We need to protect this model as from the God stealing or God compromise. However, because this, if we deploy it on edge, it's more prone, prone to be stolen. And especially when you deploy on a unmonitored edge side, so there give the new even more challenge to protect the model and the pressure data. So that, that's, and the currently all this large language model training framework or inference framework, they don't provide a built-in security model or security. Usually they rely on the cloud provider or edge provider to provide a security protection. So that's a very challenging job for us to protect it. Yeah, that's my point of view. Kevin? Okay. Um, so uh, as we can see, if we deploy some part of the, uh, the AI workloads on the edge, uh, collaborating with uh, uh, those part in the cloud, uh, I, th I think the, the development and the debugging uh, experience is kind of a new challenge. Uh, as we know that the benefit of uh, uh, this model, this pattern is that we can uh, uh, kind of keep a lot of uh, initial uh, data, raw data uh, at the edge, uh, while you may know, just uh, uh, use some uh, framework like federated learning or incremental learning to help improve the model uh, 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 as it runs. And also uh, we can do like uh, collaborative uh, in in inference. Uh, but the challenge is that uh, sometimes when it, the result is not accurate, we still need to debug, uh, may need to refer to the, uh, the raw data, the original input. Um, uh, so that becomes a, a problem that engineers may still need to kind of uh, go to the, uh, the edge site and uh, to check out the, the, the original uh, environment. So I think that's a big challenge. Uh, uh, we need to resolve, yeah. Uh, Hongbin, would you like to share your insight? 
Okay, uh, I think we face a few challenges. Uh, besides the technical challenges we talked about before, uh, from an industrial point of view, I hope to raise two challenges. Uh, the number one is energy. Uh, you know, for uh, in Kubercom, we have a lot of discussions and um, you know talks about you know how to uh, better improve the energy sa energy saving, energy consumption, right? Um, if we <clears throat> for the AI part, we know that the, even for the data center, for AI training, especially for the large language model training, need a lot of power and energy consumption, right? If we move to the edge side. Uh, no matter whatever the size of your model, uh, you you can imagine that the edge side still need a lot of power. I mean, the energy consumption. If we consider some scenarios and the constraints for the edge side, for example, especially for the mobile devices, these devices are powered by <coughs> battery or internal battery. You can imagine if we are running a large language model, even tailored large language model, in an edge device. With uh, with battery pow power with powered by battery, so you can see that the, 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 I mean it will be very short, right? So I think the energy consumption is one challenge if we really want to run, I mean the natural language model or Gen AI on edge device. I think that if we want to solve this problem, it's not just you know by software or model development. Maybe it's also related by the hardware, even the chip design or the architecture design. Yeah, so I think the number one challenge is for the energy consumption, right? So the number two from the industrial point of view is interoperability. For the data center side, for the cloud side, uh, most of the devices and architectures or frameworks are similar. And for the data exchange should be easier. <clears throat> but for the edge side, you can see that we have a lot of different architecture a lot of you know the come you know the the uh, the operating system, right? With uh, different uh, configuration, hardware configuration. So the large language model running on edge device should be pretty, should be pretty much di different. So can, how can we interact with each other, or how can we you know collaborate between cloud and the and the edge, should be a problem. So currently, from what I know, we don't have a standard open standard to you know, facilitate that. So I think the number two challenge from, in, in my view, is how we can interact gracefully between cloud and the edge, even for the edge and edge synergy. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tina, would you like to share your uh, opinion about this? Yeah, is it my turn? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, embracing the Gen AI at the edge introduces a new set of challenges, <clears throat> particularly in terms of model performance and resource optimization. One area of focus is the development and debugging of smaller models tailored for edge deployment. Ensuring these models can operate effectively in diverse and sometimes resource constrained environment without compromising on the quality of output or user experience is crucial. Moreover, the necessity to maintain data privacy and security at the edge further complicates the deployment. Developing standards for interoperability and data model synchronization across the cloud edge continuum is essential for overcoming these obstacles and enable seamless, efficient Gen AI applications. Back to Kevin. Thank you. Okay, um, yeah, we, we can move on to the uh, next topic. Next one. So um, the question is any uh, interesting uh, use case or, or, or potential use case you have seen or uh, you <coughs> are exploring by you know, in, uh, enabling the generative AI at age? Uh, Hongbin, would you like to be the first? Okay. Uh, I think for, for edge computing, edge computing has a unique advantage compared to other computings, right? It com it's naturally connected to various input and output devices. Right. For example, we have some a lot of uh, uh, AR, VR who are inverse uh, experience. Uh, 
Um, so this can be a best input and output if we connect to the uh, large language model on cloud. Or we have some wearable devices, right? So I think the unique, unique advantage for edge computing is that it will leverage the comprehensive, uh, fancy, and useful in input and output, de output devices. At the same time, we can combine these you know, channels uh, with some uh, you know, the capabilities from cloud and large, large, large language model. Gene AI. So we, if we combine this chain, we can imagine a lot of you know useful scenarios to provide a better experience, right? Um, we, for example, we had some uh, customers who are manufacturing based. A lot of devices were connected by uh, to the you know, to the IoT or even edge computing, right? So it, the, all kinds of the data will be captured by these edge devices. And if we and generate a lot of data, uh, if this you know data or some experience by edge computing can connect with Gen AI on the cloud, it will generate a lot of you know the usages and it can address a lot of you know um, very useful scenarios. So the, basically, I think we how we leverage the uh, tremendous input and output devices with the very powerful. I mean, the Gen AI capability, this will be a lot of use cases from my mind, okay. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, I think the, you know, uh, uh, this also second uh, Hong Bing's opinion, uh, actually in, in the edge computing, there are a lot of interesting scenarios. Uh, one of the uh, use case uh, me and my uh, colleagues are exploring is about the uh, uh, robotics on the edge to uh, collaborate with uh, different uh, instances to help improve the uh, the warehousing efficiency for the goods, you know, uh, 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 transitioning as well as the storing. Uh, as we see, uh, we can see that uh, at the warehouse there are a lot of uh, complicated uh, use case for the uh, use uh, complicated tasks for the uh, different robotics to uh, to do to finish, and uh, they need to. Uh, take care of the route they are going to, to avoid uh, conflating with each other, and uh, also uh, to, to save the energy. So, and also, uh, we also had the administrator at, uh, uh, for the warehouse to, to organize the whole, uh, whole thing. So, uh, so there's a chance actually we can uh, rely on the LM to deal with uh, you know, the interaction with uh, uh, people and uh, to uh, dispatch the more clear uh, task description for the robotics and also uh, use the AI powered algorithm to improve the, uh, the robotics uh, route planning, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tina, would you like to share uh, your insights about this? Uh, me? Yes, yes. Oh, Jane and I can uh, rev, uh, revolutionize the edge computing applications by enabling more intelligent, context-aware interactions in real time. For instance, integrating the LIM-based machine translation with systematic self-correction directly on devices could vastly improve the communication barriers in IoT applications. Another exciting domain is prompt engineering at the CDN edge, which can be um, significantly enhance the content delivery and personalization for users. These applications not only demonstrate the potential of Gen AI to transform edge computing, but also highlight the need for innovative approaches to model deployment and management. Yeah, uh, we have a demo in the, um, uh, it's for the using the whisper model on the edge to do the live translate. Yeah, if uh, you're interested, I can provide the offline. Okay. Yeah, uh, so um, uh, uh, we, we are actually concluding this uh, panel discussion. I would like to, uh, okay. Uh, Ian, would you like to share your insights or? 
Uh, yeah, I, I just have the similar mm -hmm. similar observations. Say, when we deploy GenAI on the edge side, it will be closer to the user, so we can provide more real time LLM based machine translation uh, or things, especially when it's not closer to any data center because current from engineer from cloud side still take time. So when deployed to the edge, we can reduce the latency. Yeah, that's my observation. Uh, back to you. All right, um, so uh, let's just uh, re uh, recap uh, we, what we discussed and uh, hopefully we can have some more uh, time for the Q&A. Um, so uh, today we discussed about the uh, collaboration between uh, cloud and edge. Uh, we actually re recognize that the deployment that is uh, uh, not a solitary task, but also a, a symphony of collaboration between cloud and edge. So each has a role to play, uh, complementing the uh, the other to uh, create a co uh, cohesive uh, environment for Gen AI applications. Uh, second, uh, embarrassing the challenge and opportunities uh, that is. Uh, Rapid, uh, rap, uh, rapidly evolving field presents both opportunities and uh, challenges, right? So both uh, security and uh, privacy are very important when running a uh, Gen AI at age. And also the interoperability to support uh, heterogeneous hardware architectures and also the data collaboration patterns uh, are very uh, important. Uh, third, we uh, discuss about the, the uh, innovative uh, perspectives uh, in the uh, vertical integration. So uh, some of the new points, uh, viewpoints have been uh, emerged to the uh, contextual and the vertical integration of Gen AI. Um, so um, uh, that's uh, what I've seen. Uh, Tina, do you have uh, any uh, addition about this? Yeah, so as we conclude, it's clear that the intersection of Gen AI and edge computing presents both significant opportunities and challenges. Our discussion today underscores the importance of balanced deployment strategy that leverages the strengths of both the cloud and edge. The rapid pace of change in this field demands continuous adaptation and exploration. By focusing on the, de the development of new models and deployment strategies, as well as addressing interoperability and privacy concerns, we can unlock the full potential of Gen AI at the edge. I'm excited about future collaborations and innovations that will emerge from this dynamic landscape. Okay. Uh, Back to you. Okay. Uh, yes, I think uh, it will be a solid trend to, to see that we can connect the Gen AI with edge computing, yeah, because the edge computing can provide all kinds of the scenarios. It can connect the device, connect the people, connect the data, and provide the low latency scenarios. And so how we can leverage uh, the powerful capability from uh, Gen AI on cloud and the no latency with various scenarios from edge, edge computing, I think this will be very exciting and interesting. Okay. Uh, Ying, would you like to add something? Yeah, I agree with everyone. So there's a lot of potential in the future and we are facing pretty good challenges to bring over to the new to the new world yep that's my okay all right uh so uh it's a, a pleasure to uh, engage this uh, dialogue with you and uh any questions <clears throat> i think we're open for discussions because this is a panel discussion right yeah, yeah. you can also share your ideas not just questions Okay. Yeah, please. 
Hi, um, thank you for the discussions. Um, I actually work for one of the big manufacturing firms, um, and we do have these exact problems which you may always, uh, stated here, like uh, are taking advantage of LLMs and uh, identifying any manufacturing uh, issues uh, which we have uh, on uh, edge computing because we have limited computing in the manufacturing lines, for example. So can you elaborate on what challenges you have faced in your project so that we can take advantage of? Uh, uh, please paint us a scenario where you have applied LLMs for uh, on edge and what challenges you had faced so that we can take our challenges. Is that? No, we shall. Thank you. So, so the question is about the uh, the adoption and the usage for the uh, manufacturers, right? Yeah. So, uh, one of the use cases uh, we have uh, seen in the CubeAge community actually uh, is uh, people using uh, CubeAge to kind of uh, manage the the whole uh, the product line. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, data to collect. And also, uh, one of the manufacturers, they use AI to kind of uh, detect the quality yep. of, the, of the product that they uh, produced. And th that helps resolve the, the, actually the human resources. And also, uh, also as you know, uh, the, data, uh, the product line, there are a lot of massive data. So you basically need some of the uh, uh, software filter to filter the raw data, and then collaborate the uh, the uh, the most uh, the collect the most the important uh, part uh, you think uh, and uh, you know to generate more uh, uh, useful information. Yeah, that's what I have seen. Yes, I can add you know some comments for say usage in manufacturing. So like Kevin mentioned, uh, for I think majority of the com manufacturers are using AI technology to uh, to do uh, defect I mean uh, detection, right? So previously, I mean, the purpose model for manufacturing is to deploy a, a, I mean, a small model in the front line, uh, but leverage the computing power at the back end, right? So this is the previous model. So right now, it's uh, also evolved to a new model that even for the edge side, you detect a, a defect. Only, I mean, the backend large language machine AI can generate more information for you to guide how what the problem is. So give you all kinds of uh, useful information for you to reference. So this is, uh, I think, is an upgrade from the traditional model to a gen AI model. So this is the first one. Uh, and second scenario we met is for the uh, source control and the source track. Uh, you, for example, if you find a call, if you find a good with quality issue, so you need to you need to track what the problem is, maybe from the, the raw material or from the production phase. So the Gen AI can tell you and give you some guidance the which is possible to have issues. So that's the two scenarios we met in manufacturing scenario. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, more question? Yes, please. Hi, uh, my name is Selena. I work at NGROC, so we're a reverse proxy, and we sell our product as an API gateway. And uh, many of our customers are um, like maybe not manufacturing devices, but um, IoT devices who want to configure ingress into into their devices. Uh, I was wondering if you, because uh, how do I phrase this question? Do you um, for the configuration part for configuring IP policies and be filtering on, on requests uh, going into uh, th those devices? Do you use the LLM models to maybe play with that, or are you just running into the same challenges uh, that, that other people do when configuring ingress to their devices in terms of like scaling ports or configuring IP policies? Does, does that make sense? Uh, uh, just to understand your question, you mean uh, you are uh, exploring the usage of uh, uh, LLM to help simplify the configuration? Is that a question? 
Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, this is actually not uh, uh, very special to uh, the edge computing, but a lot of uh, a lot of uh, general uh, uh, use case. Uh, if you got you know complicated configuration and uh, uh, you know uh, LM, the uh, generative AI is uh, definitely very helpful because you uh, uh, first of all you don't need everyone to really understand the. The, what exactly the uh, the field means in the in the config file, and you can rely on the uh, Gen AI to actually generate a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, configuration values, uh, not just uh, always to the uh, default values, but according to the uh, context the people uh, are really uh, looking for. Uh, that's what I have seen people are doing. Yeah. Okay, um, yes, right now we are engaging with one customer um, to how to accelerate the deployment, especially for the massive deployment. Yeah, because even in edge computing, there are a lot of devices you need to uh, configure and deploy. So yes, we are considering and uh, we work with our you know, potential customer to uh, work out a solution how to leverage uh, Gen AI to generate uh, some, not just the guidance, but still the configuration um, and the, the file. Uh, and to how to help their uh, easy deploy the massive uh, equipment uh, by configuration. But this needs some work because, uh, you know, the every, every place for, I mean, the every device, they should have their own configuration or customized configuration. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, since we're running out of time, uh, we're wrapping up today. Um, if you like to discuss more, uh, sorry, uh, please feel free to connect us uh, on, on LinkedIn. Okay, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you.